السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. My brothers and sisters, it is reported that Luqman was a wise man from Africa, and he was so wise his wisdom is mentioned in the Quran by Allah Almighty. Allah granted him the wisdom. Now, why would Allah make mention of a man from Africa in the Quran? Because of the wisdom, Allah Almighty does not look at where you come from. He looks at the deeds. He looks at what you've done. And here is something amazing. He is actually known as Luqman the wise. So what did he tell his child? He advised his child. He gave his child, his son, a few pieces of advice. And Allah mentions it beautifully. وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِظُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ Remember when Luqman told his son, while he was giving him great advice, Oh my son, don't associate partners with Allah. Worship your maker alone. For indeed, if you were to associate partners with your maker in worship, it's the biggest wrongdoing you could ever do. Wow, what a powerful piece of advice. From a man in Africa, subhanallah, Luqman, the wise. And so the whole surah is named after this man. What an honor. What an honor. People actually mistaken him for a prophet. So Luqman, may Allah have mercy on him, he was a great man. He spoke to his son about association of partners with Allah in worship, to worship Allah alone, to worship your maker alone. He spoke about being kind to your parents, fulfilling the rights of your parents, even if they're not following your faith or they're trying to make you do something wrong. You will not follow what was wrong, but you make sure that you, you obey, meaning you make sure you're kind to them and you show them goodness and respect. Then he spoke about the fact that you can never hide anything from the Almighty, no matter what it is, you will not hide anything from the Almighty. Then he speaks about prayer, being punctual with your prayer. Obviously, the prayer at the time was a different type of prayer, but for us, it's the five daily prayers. It's still a duty unto the Almighty. And then he speaks about encouraging people to do good and discouraging them from bad. That's a very great duty upon our shoulders. And he says, Wasbir ala ma asabak. Bear patience. Bear patience, O oh my son, in that which Allah has inflicted you with. When you're tested with something, bear patience, because Allah knows what He is doing. This is Luqman giving his son advice, and he says, Don't be arrogant. Don't turn your cheek away from people, or don't give your cheek to the people in an arrogant way. And when you walk, Walk with humility. Look, this point is coming again. We spoke about it in a previous episode. It's all about walking on earth. When you carry yourself, how do you carry yourself? Be humble. Greet people. Be helpful. Don't think you are it because subhanallah, that's not success. That's not what would please the Almighty. And then he says, watch your tone when you speak. Luqman is telling his son, Watch your tone when you speak. Don't scream because definitely the worst of sounds is the braying of a donkey. That's what he says. So don't scream. When you scream and yell, no one will understand what you're saying. Allah's given you the power of speech. Speak eloquently. Speak beautifully. No need to scream and yell. So those were the advices of Luqman to his son and Allah makes mention of them. You want to connect with Allah? You want to reconnect with Allah, you reconnect with revelation. In revelation, Allah has chosen to speak about these pieces of advice from Luqman. Then there is a surah known as Surah Sajda. Today, in this episode, I make mention of the surah because in it, there is mention of a prostration, the prostration of the one who fears Allah, who's looking forward to the meeting with Allah. Those are the ones who have nothing to fear. They fall prostrate when they are reminded of Allah. They fall prostrate when they are reminded of the verses of Allah and their duties unto Allah. How many of us, when we are reminded of prayer, we're not interested in praying. 
This is just a reminder of Allah and His verses. When the verses of Allah are recited, they fall in prayer. Allah says, you know what? Those are the ones who forsake their beddings at night in order to get up and pray for our sake. For them, we've prepared something amazing. Something that will really, really cool their eyes. We've prepared a paradise of the highest degree. May Allah Almighty grant us the ability to worship Him in the most beautiful way. And may Allah Almighty grant us from His goodness. Do you know the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, being the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah, it was simple for Allah never to allow him to witness or to go through any hardship, any difficulty, any negativity at all. Simple. Allah says in the Quran, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي إِن شَاءَ جَعَلَ لَكَ خَيْرًا مِّن ذَلِكَ جَنَّاتِ Glory be to Allah. Elevated is Allah. Majestic is Allah, whom if he willed and he wished, he could have given you much better. He could have given you gardens, plush gardens, like a paradise on earth that would have been given to Muhammad, may peace be upon him. But Allah allowed him to go through certain things in order to teach us lessons, in order for us to go through his biography and to appreciate what we have, in order for us to learn how to endure, how to worship, how to go through the paces of life, every single thing. And therefore, in Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah Almighty says, in verse number 21, Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ Indeed, for you, for anyone who's willing or who's looking forward to the meeting with Allah, there is a beautiful example embodied in that, in the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You want to follow a good example? Here is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Follow him in his mannerisms, in his etiquettes, in his worship, in his morals, in his values, in his ways, in his habits, in the do's and the don'ts, in how he endured, in everything. Here is the man. What we did is, the one we loved the most, we made him go through the paces of life so that you can learn from him and follow that example completely. There was perfection in him. But at the same time, if you follow his example, you will arrive at a great level of connection with Allah. And when that happens, you are happy, you're content. So this is an amazing uh, piece of advice and instruction of Allah Almighty to say, would you like to follow a good example? Well, here's the example. If you're a believer and you're looking forward to the meeting with Allah, follow it and Allah will grant you. Then we have a verse where Allah Almighty tells us, also in Surah Al-Ahzab, towards the end, to watch our tongues. Notice how Luqman the wise said the same to his son about watching the tongue. And Allah is telling us in a clearer term, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا O you who believe, be conscious of Allah, develop the correct relationship with Allah and utter that which is straight and upright. Watch your utterances. Don't utter that which is going to earn the displeasure of Allah. No deception, no swearing, no falsehood, no uh, evil coming out, no vulgar words, no immoral words should come out of your mouth. Utter good words. Your life will change. Even jokingly, utter good words. Stay away from vulgar words, immorality. Allah says, when you do that, when you only utter good words, we will make your good deeds good enough to be accepted by us and we will forgive your shortcomings. By the mere fact that you are conscious of how you speak. Do you know, in the month of Ramadan, everyone's worried about what goes into the mouth? How many are worried about what comes out of the mouth? When Allah Almighty tells us both of those are equally important in Ramadan and subhanAllah even outside of Ramadan. So may Allah Almighty grant us goodness and may Allah Almighty grant us ease. This is the book that we should be connected with. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyaddabbaru ayatih wa liyatadhak a book that we have revealed to you in order that you ponder very deeply through its verses. In order that you ponder very deeply over its verses. 
and in order for it to be a reminder for those with sound intellect. May Allah accept it from us and grant us paradise, give us the best of this world and the next. And may Allah Almighty be pleased with every one of us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.